Okay, in this problem, we're given a function f of x, y, z equals the square root of x plus the cube root of y plus the fifth root of z and a point p equals 1, 1, 1. And we're asked to determine the following. Uh, part A, the direction in which f increases most rapidly at p. Part B, the maximum value of the rate of change of f at p. And part C, the direction in which f decreases most rapidly at p. And part D, the minimum value of the rate of change of f at p. Finally, part E, a description of the directions in which f remains constant. Okay, so we can recall from a previous exercise that the gradient vector of f at the point 1, 1, 1 is equal to 1 half, 1 third, 1 fifth. And we want to determine the direction in which f increases most rapidly at p. And we know that the direction in which f increases most rapidly is the same direction as the gradient vector. And we want it to be a unit vector. So for part a, we can just normalize the vector, uh, the gradient vector. So we get So we get the vector 1 half, 1 third, 1 fifth over the square root of 1 fourth plus 1 ninth plus 1 25th. And that simplifies down to Thirty over nineteen times the vector one half, one third, one fifth, and for part B, we want to calculate the maximum value of the rate of change of f at p. Well, we know that the rate of change of f at p in the direction u is the directional derivative of f at p in the direction u, and that's equivalent to Uh, magnitude of the gradient vector of f at p dotted with the, or times the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between the gradient vector of f at p and u. So we know that the magnitude of the gradient vector will always be positive, so we just need to maximize the cosine of theta. The maximum value of cosine theta is 1. So the maximum value of the directional derivative is just going to be the magnitude of the gradient vector. So our result will just be the magnitude of the vector 1 half, 1 third, 1 fifth, which we know to be 19 over 30. For part C, we know that the direction in which f decreases most rapidly is the opposite of the gradient vector. So it'll just be the negation of our unit vector from part A. And for part D, we want to calculate the minimum value of the rate of change of f at p. Well, looking back at our part b, we see that we just want to minimize this. This is going to, uh, the gradient vector of f at p will always be positive, so we want to minimize the cosine of theta, which is negative 1. 
So the minimum value will be the negation of the uh, gradient vector of f, the magnitude of the gradient vector of f at t. So it will be negative 19 over 30. Okay, so for part E, we want to find a description of the directions in which f remains constant. So we know that that the directional derivative is equivalent to the gradient vector of f at p dotted with u. And we want that to remain constant. So we want to set that equal to 0. And we know that the gradient vector of f at p is equal to the vector 1 half, 1 third, 1 fifth. And we're going to want to find some vector that uh, produces 0 as a result when we dot product it with that. So we can calculate this dot product. And we get the equation x over 2 plus y over 3 plus c over 5 equals 0. This is the equa an equation for a plane in R3. And we want to find a description of the points where this is a unit vector. So the unit vectors all lie in R3, all lie on a, lie on a sphere around the origin. So we can describe the points in which f remains constant as the intersection of the plane x over 2 plus y over 3 plus z over 5 equals 0. And the unit sphere. So we could just leave it at that. Or we could also do we could also describe this as a unit vector. Um, we could solve for one of the variables, z, plug it into our x, y, and z, and then take the unit vector. So we would have So we would have our unit vector is equivalent to this if we solved for z. But it's just as simple to say that it's the intersection of the sphere and the plane.